Do you need your prereqs before the MCAT? Hey guys, this is Leia from LeahForSci.com and in this video we're going to discuss what to do if you haven't taken your science prereqs before your MCAT. No, you're not required to take prereqs before the MCAT, but it is very, very strongly advised. Most US medical schools will require that you take a year of physics, general chemistry, organic chemistry, biology, and some will require biochem, calculus, and other classes. Schools in Canada vary where some have the same prereqs and some don't have any science prereqs. That's right, no science prereqs for some of these schools. When you sign up to take the MCAT, they don't ask you, have you taken all your prereqs? They just take your money and let you sign up. The question is, is that the right thing for you with your unique situation? If you're just trying to get the MCAT out of the way and you know you have to take all these classes, why not just take the classes first so that when you study the same material again for the MCAT, you're not hearing it for the first time, it's easier to learn, easier to get through, and you'll know it so much better. Now I realize that's not the situation for everyone. Perhaps you're trying to take the MCAT in your junior year and finish your classes in senior year. Maybe you're a non-traditional student who didn't take the prereqs in undergrad and now you're trying to figure out the ideal timeline where you take science classes, take the MCAT, and then while you're going through the application and interview process, complete some of the prereqs. And so you're trying to figure out what you have to take when. Within reason, I recommend that you don't try to self-study more than two of the difficult science classes. But what you need to recognize if you are self-studying is that one, you have to give yourself enough time for every class, and two, you're not going to be moving at the same pace as a student who has taken these classes. So you know you have to self-teach at least one science. How much time do you give yourself? Well, first, take a step back to understand what the average student who takes the class goes through. When I took classes in undergrad, the semester was 14 weeks long. Every science class would meet, say, two or three times a week. Let's simplify and say about two hours a week for 14 weeks. That rounds up to 30 hours. Then all the studying and the homework and the practice would take at least 10 hours a week, especially classes like physics and orgo, probably closer to 20 on some weeks. But let's estimate 10 hours a week, about 140 hours, that puts us at 170. And then on weeks leading up to quizzes, exams, midterms, finals, even more studying, which will simply round up another 30, which gets us to 200 hours. That's not 200 hours for a complete science, that's one class. So if you're looking at an entire year of physics, that's 400 hours. Entire year of organic chemistry, another 400 hours. Now I'm not saying it's gonna take you 400 hours to self-study, but keep that in mind when you're evaluating your pace because a lot of students try to learn an entire subject in two weeks, yes, two weeks, and they wonder why they don't understand it or why they're not getting it fast enough. It's not that you're stupid. It's not that you're not cut out to be a doctor. It's simply that you're trying to go too fast. Say you're studying full time at 40 hours a week and you're going to dedicate an entire month to this subject. That comes to about 160 hours. It's not quite the 200 that we discussed, but at least you understand how much time it's going to take you. I recommend adding at least one month for every class that you have to self-study. So if you thought you were going to complete content in three months, but you're missing physics too, now you need four months. You're also missing orgo too, now you need five months. This is the timeline that you set up in the beginning. And then as you progress through the material and understand how long it takes you, you'll be able to adjust your timeline based on what you've proven to yourself that you need for this subject. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying to take a month and just study that subject, then take another month and just study the other subject. I'm saying that you want to extend your timeline by that much because as I explain in the link below, I recommend making progress in every subject every single week. That extra month just tells you how much more time you want to add so you have enough time to learn this material for the first time. 
So you know that you have to self-study one or more subjects before your MCAT. How do you make sure that you learn it the right way and actually understand it? I have two different approaches that I recommend. And the first is for students who have never taken a class and are terrified of it. Or this is also for you if you have taken the class and either you didn't do well or it was a long time ago and the subject just terrifies you. I've had students come to me and say, Leah, I have to self-study physics for the MCAT because I'm not taking it till next year or because my Canadian medical school doesn't have a physics requirement, but I'm terrified of the subject. And every time I open my book, I'm just so overwhelmed. I want to quit. Now I can't tell you, guess what? You want to be a doctor, suck it up, go study physics, because if you can't study physics, how are you going to do the MCAT? Right? Mm -mm. Nope. If you're scared of something, option one is to just push through and burn yourself out, or you can find a way to study the material that takes away the fear. Because if you're not terrified, you're less likely to give up every day. And if you don't give up, you get through it. And if you get through it, you reach your goals and you don't burn out in the process. And how do we do that? We take away the pressure. I've had many students go through this successfully, where by the time they're done, they say, you know what? The subject isn't so bad. I'm excited to start learning. I'm excited to work through these problems. The way you do this is by finding a video series like the MCAT Study Hall Boot Camps that can teach you this information as a preview, something you're gonna go through before you start studying. Say you're self-studying physics. Every time your schedule says physics, Instead of sitting down to your books with practice and reading and understanding and memorization, you're just going to watch a video. You're going to watch the video without pausing if you don't understand something, without taking notes, without working on the equations, without worrying about what you have to memorize. The only thing you're doing here is exposing yourself to the material, asking what the heck is going on, and if some of it sinks in, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. There's no pressure because if you don't understand, that's okay. There's no frustration because you're not doing any practice problems, so you're not getting anything wrong. And by taking away all those negative feelings, it's easier to get through. Now that you're sitting down to study for the first time, it's not as scary because it's no longer an unknown entity. Even if you didn't understand it before, you kind of know what's going on and when you take the time to slowly go through the material now, it'll be easier to understand because the big picture already makes sense and now it's just a question of really mastering the specifics. If you're self-studying a topic that doesn't scare you as much and you just want to go right into proper studying, what I recommend is giving yourself more time for this new subject compared to everything else. The first two weeks are going to be an experiment. Ask yourself, Compared to the other subjects, how much extra time do I think I need for this? For example, most students will need at least three times as many study blocks for physics as they do psychology. If you've never taken biochem, you probably want twice or more the number of study hours per week as general chemistry. What if you guessed wrong? It doesn't matter. This is just for two weeks. Set up your study schedule, Give yourself the extra time, and then after the two weeks, calculate your total progress using the timeline estimation video link below, and use that to figure out what you have to change for the coming weeks. If this new subject is lagging more than 10% behind something else, consider reducing the number of hours for the faster subject and adding more time for the slower subject. Say after two weeks, you're at 10% in biochem and 25% in psych -soc. consider giving yourself two hours less for psych -soc each week and putting those two hours towards biochem. Now you'll be moving faster with biochem, slower with psych -soc, so they each progress at about the same pace. Students often ask me, how long does it take to self-study subject X? The answer is, I don't know. The answer is, you can't know, but after you evaluate your own progress, you have a way to figure it out. Because if it takes you one week to get through 
it should take you 10 weeks to get through 100%. So let's back it up for a second. Knowing how long it's going to take, the next question is how to actually master the sciences because studying is not enough if you're not actually getting it. First, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Then click the link below or go to layoverside.com slash five steps so that you can learn how to make your study time as effective as possible so that you're actually learning and understanding the material and most importantly, remembering it for the long term.